Hello City A fan, just like Juan Musso, we're back with a bang as the transfer window closes and City A prepares for the Derby de la Madonnina. Goes on to Inter, Boga to Atalanta, finally, and Vlaovic to Juve, but do all roads lead away from Rome for Zaniolo? We'll discuss all of that and the rest of the action in this episode of Scudetto. Hello and welcome to Scudetto. I want to start this episode by apologizing for the extended break between between shows. Uh, firstly, we had Oscar struck down with COVID. Uh, happy to say he's back to apparently full fitness now, but was completely wiped out for, for a couple of weeks. Uh, and then shortly after that, we had the catastrophic technical issue that was... Uh, Completely out of our hands, of course, when we were attempting, <laughs> yeah, dishonorable uh, to our uh, technical providers, uh, when we were obviously attempting to, to record last week's episode. So uh, apologies for, for the absence. Uh, there is more Oscar news to bring you before we start this week's episode. Uh, he's actually taken on a new role in London, and sadly, it's proving challenging for him to find the time to, to join us on the show. He may be back in future. We hope he is. Uh, but for the foreseeable, you're going to be stuck with Boaz, myself, and hopefully a bunch of exciting guests to fill the void. Uh, and I've got one final apology of the episode. Uh, and that is, uh, I'm saying a preemptive sorry for the fact that this is going to be a very big club-focused episode uh, we wanted to bring you our thoughts on Diego Costa's astonishing move to Salernitana, but sadly, that wasn't to be. Uh, so the big clubs are kind of where all the drama has been. Uh, but f- before we get into all of that, Boaz, how are you doing? How have you been? Uh, and have you got beer for us this week? Let's start off with the beer. I'm doing uh, pretty well overall. I've got uh, been the IPA, my local favorite independent brewery. Signed the deal with one of the biggest um, supermarket chains, so suddenly the beers are readily available. And to answer your first question, I've been pretty good. Uh, I've had a fairly dry January, mostly because we haven't been recording much. So I look forward to tasting this beer now. Looking forward to it myself as well, Boaz. I, for my part, I'm not particularly inspiring choice this week. I've had this a couple of times before. Brewdog, Planet Pale, Pale Ale. Uh, It's kind of good for a weeknight, uh, relatively flavorsome. Uh, Right. Let's get going then. Let's get cracking. Buzz, we're going to start. There's There's been so much to speak about over the last uh, few weeks, uh, but we're going to start with the weekend's big, big match, the Derby de la Madonnina, Inter Milan. Uh, what a way to start back after the winter's winter break. Obviously, Inter signed Gozins, but he's not yet back from that those uh, sort of long-running injury worries that he's had at Atalanta. Uh, after completing that transfer. Uh, Alexis Sanchez also back on Friday from duty, uh, international duty. Uh, so it looks like Dzeko and Lautaro are likely to start from Milan's end. Zlatan almost certainly is going to miss this game. It seems like he's been kind of pulling out all the stops to try and get fit, but looking very much like Giro is going to start. Uh, Simone Inzaghi, in positive news for Inter has uh, recovered from COVID in time for this one. Boaz, from Milan's point of view, given that that's where you sit, uh, this is a season-defining game, isn't it? Tell us, what is your rapport with the Derby? And uh, how do you feel heading into this particular one? It's probably my most hated game of the season. There's always uh, excess tension and people who you normally think are relatively normal suddenly become totally crazy or the barman who's been serving you coffee for your whole life suddenly suddenly comes out of the woodwork as a <laughs> hooligan um, <laughs> true story but uh, and personally I've seen I've actually seen Milan win this game quite convincingly on a few occasions and I've also been present when Inter have won so uh, as I said I have a bittersweet rapport with it and uh, it's one of those games I watch uh, with my hands covering my eyes let's say uh, specifically yeah. to this particular game, I have to say that, uh, um, well, Inter are top of the league and flying high in terms of results. And Milan have had a, a bit of a shaky few weeks. So I'd, I'd say that Inter are probably favorites, but uh, 
as we've said in on previous occasions and both in the Milan derby but all derbies form sometimes goes out of the window so uh although i i would make inter slight favorites uh, i wouldn't underestimate the rossoneri yeah 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 fair points on on all fronts and i think i mean i said it was a season deciding uh, defining game for milan i kind of feel like the momentum is all with inter and that's what uh, oscar has often liked to remind us that, that the bookies say that form is king but as you said, that all goes out the window in Derby. If Milan could win this, then all of a sudden we're looking at a real three-way title race again because Napoli have obviously dragged themselves uh, back into it. Uh, but let, let's talk about Inter a little bit because they come into this uh, after that last-minute Jekyll winner against Venezia. I sent them four points clear. If you would cast your mind back, uh, was that deserved? Uh, and does it fill them with confidence, I guess, going into this game? I feel there were parallels between the Inter Venezia game you mentioned and the Milan Spezia game that happened a week earlier, in the sense that uh, the home team were supposedly cl- uh, clear favorites and kind of huffed and puffed and created a lot of chances. But Milan were unable to put those chances away and ultimately suffered uh, to Spezia, whereas Inter suffered and eventually managed to pull through with goals from uh, Zeko, who was, of course is a summer signing and and was set up by Dumfries, who also replaced one of the the players they sold in the summer. So um, it's one of these scenarios where it feels like everything is falling into the right place for Inter, even in games where supposedly they should drop points here and there, they're still managing to get the whole three points. I mean, I might yeah, be getting a little bit ahead of myself, but uh, they also just signed Caicedo, who had a has a bit of a knack for scoring goals in the 90th minute, at least when he was at Lazio. Yeah. That, that's a scary proposition considering how many goals Inter have already scored in towards the end of games. Yeah, I mean, you've kind of preempted me a little bit, but I was going to say Milan obviously go into this uh, off the back of the dramatic slash controversial 2-1 loss to Venezia that you just mentioned there. And then that... Spezia. Sorry, just Spezia. Absolutely. Uh, and um, the slightly eventless 0-0 draw against... Juve. If we leave aside the horrific uh, refereeing error in the, the, that defeat, uh, for which the referee, of course, has has apologised, uh, Milan Juve to me kind of feels like it was two points dropped, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you'd be right in saying that this is a two points dropped by Milan, a point further fortified by Pioli's comments post match, where he essentially said that the glass is half empty, uh, but he did stress that this was partly because of the result against Spezia. And that had Milan got the full points against Spezia, as they probably deserved, then the draw against Juve wouldn't have been so bad. But now in terms of the, the Classifica and also in terms of the derby coming up, uh, these points are beginning to weigh. And um, it was a very dull game. I mean, considering this is one of the highlights of Serie A and beamed all over the world, there was very few chances and overall very disappointing. Both teams felt a little bit toothless. Yeah, I mean, there were some sort of bright signs for for Juve and Milan, a, a few players who didn't disappoint. Yeah, and amongst all the boredom, there were a few shining lights, uh, namely probably Leao from Milan, who yeah. uh, was looked like he was uh, full of energy and was uh, was really creating some stuff. And Dybala for uh, Juventus, who, mm-hmm. uh, despite his contractual situation, played one of his better games this season. And it, But without... Uh, getting much uh, joy up front. Elsewhere, maybe we should highlight the fact that uh, Sandro Tonali really bossed Locatelli and uh, it, this is going to be an interesting mm. point for the Nazionale when the game against uh, Macedonia and Portugal come up. But uh, yeah, it, uh, it's yet another display of how much Tonali has matured over the past year or so. Yeah, uh, right. I mean, let's just let's move on a bit, uh, but stay with uh, Inter because uh, I think we're going to speak about that Gozen's uh, incoming uh, at Inter. Obviously, one for my money, one of the best left backs in Europe. But certainly, I don't think anyone would dispute that they're uh, one of the, is one of the best left backs in Serie A. Does this fill you with fear for the title run-in? First of all, I'm disappointed you didn't say uh, that Gozins doesn't go straight goes in straight to the team sheet in the derby. <laughs> so uh, that's a missed occasion on your front. But um, <laughs> I mean, if I have to be a bit cheeky, I'd say that the best left back in Serie A is already playing in Milan, but in the other side of Milan. But uh, Gozins, of course, 
of course is a fantastic player and uh it it shows that inter are willing to reinforce themselves in areas where maybe they weren't uh, as strong although i've said time and time again that in my mind maybe with the exception of the keeper they have the best the best squad in Serie A right now uh but gozens is a formidable addition i'm yet to see i'm yet to understand what the situation is with him with regards to the injury because it felt a bit strange to see atalanta let him go quite so easily we should also say that uh, atalanta have priors in selling players that were looked outstanding in bergamo and then who went on to juve milan or inter and uh didn't quite shine uh, Gagliardini at Inter comes to mind, Caldara who is now at Venezia, as well as Conti who all seemed like they were going to be uh, world beaters and then when they got on to bigger clubs they, out of the Atalanta system they kind of uh, faded away. Of those guys maybe Gagliardini is the best but it's not like he's uh, setting the world on fire right now. I think Inter have reinforced themselves, I, I think uh, I also know that Atalanta wouldn't have sold him had they not known that they have either have an alternative lined up for June or that they plan they know something about him that we don't know. Ooh. Wow, the plot thickens was uh just my tuppence worth from a Atlanta perspective. Uh I mean it is it is gutting because he's done so much for the club. I think he leaves with the sort of best wishes of the supporters despite the fact that he is going to one of the Milan Giants. But I think, I mean, Atlanta fairly well covered at uh, uh, that sort of fullback, w- uh, wingback uh, position. You know, we've got Mele, uh, Pezzella, Zapacosta, Hattiber. Personally, as an Atlanta fan, I feel like in the acquisition of Boga, they finally have a, a replacement for, for Papu Gomez. So I don't think it's been a, a disastrous window from, from Atlanta's point of view. But I guess we, we'll, we'll wait and find out. It's an interesting parallel you draw between Papu Gomez and Boga because while they obviously don't play... In- the exact same position they do have that uh je ne sais quoi to them the a bit of flair that maybe atalanta sometimes need to break oppositions that are defending deeply and this season especially it, they've had some draws some at home that we expect them to win and maybe with a player with boga's uh, uh skill they can uh, kind of unlock these defenses e- more easily yeah, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what what I meant. I mean, Boga perhaps traditionally has played m- sort of more as an out and out winger, really at Sassuolo. But I mean, Papu Gomez has done that in his career as well. But it's you know the dribbling ability, uh, and the ability to sort of unlock uh, defenses, like you mentioned, that where perhaps um, Atalanta have struggled to kind of kind of do that. Um, also with Ilicic out of out of form. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, goes without saying his ability to pull a, a magic shot out of nowhere, which kind of, to me, is a bit reminiscent of uh, what Papu Gomez brought to Atalanta. Uh, but let's move on to the other big, big signing now. Uh, we're going to speak about Vlaovic to, to Juve. I was going to say earlier when we spoke about the fact that Juve didn't have a single shot on target at San Siro that maybe they need to buy a striker. <laughs> yeah, well, fortunately for them... Uh, unfortunately for you, Boaz, uh, you've had a little bit of time to reflect on this. So tell us what your reflections are. So first of all, Vlavic is the most expensive January signing in the Serie A ever. So um, that's a big onus on him. And also uh, with the, with their spending over over the Christmas slash uh, January market, Juventus were behind only Newcastle in terms of uh, expenditure. So that shows that Juventus felt that, that they needed to make some swift changes to the team and uh, reinforce their battle for top four spots having said that i think that uh, some of the old problems that uh allegri's game and specifically juventus this season have had will not instantly disappear now that uh, they've signed a, a what is supposedly a generational talent vlavic will definitely bang the goals away but the question is who is going to provide him with the passes to score those goals yeah well it's funny that you should uh, you should say that boaz because the other big news emerging in the last day or so uh, is not, I would I would argue, that Juve have signed Swiss international Denis Zakaria from, as Antonio Conte calls him, Munchen Black, um, but that they have uh, are supposedly have thrown their hat in the ring for Zaniolo, who it appears uh, is going to be on his way out from Roma quite soon. Apparently Roma have a price tag on his head uh, and Juve, Juve are among the front runners to to sign him. If they can pull this off, Boaz, Zagnolo, Chiesa, Locatelli, Vlaovic, it's kind of looking like Allegri is for real when he talks about this big rebuild, wouldn't you say? 
definitely should uh, Zaniolo join the players you've already mentioned. It would it would be a, another formidable part to the puzzle. It's I'm still not sure what kind of uh, formation Allegri plans to play should he have all these players available to him. And uh, I, I'll be curious to see what happens once Chiesa comes back, how he plans to play with Chiesa, Vlaovic, and of course Dybala, sh- should he stay. So I, I think, obviously, these are the kind of uh, problems that you, you'd you like to have as a manager, great players. But I feel that, again, the Juventus midfield in particular maybe is lacking a little bit, a little bit of something. And the signing of Zakaria, who... I, I don't know too much about, so I I, I don't want to put my neck out too much on the line, but I'm I'm pretty sure he's not the second coming of uh, Paul Pogba or Patrick Vieira, as he likes to compare himself to. And mm. um, I think it's uh, quite telling that no no other club was really in for him, in, despite his contract being up this summer. So question marks about this signing. I I mean, this I, as I said before, I don't know too much about him, but I'm I'm not sure that these two signings are definitely are definitely what's going to make uh, Juventus start ticking or more to the point start playing uh entertaining football yeah quite right i mean obviously uh paratici coming to uh <laughs> coming to you with rescue i had big question question marks about uh about them you know how could they afford to sign vlaovic and how could they afford to be in the market for zaniolo but when you've got paratici signing uh kulzevsky and bentancur for essentially what looks like the same amount that they've uh, forked out for Vlaovic uh, and obviously Ramsey leaving to go to Rangers as well obviously the financials start to start to make a lot more sense uh, right let's move on to our best of the rest section which is a bit of a transfer roundup uh, this time we've got quite a lot to get through and um, we're not going to start with the transfer roundup we're going to start off with just a few bits of news uh, obviously everyone Delighted to see Mario Balotelli and uh, now Italian Joao Pedro joining uh, the Azzurri for for that training camp. Genoa obviously sacked Shevchenko and brought in Alexander Blessing from Belgian club KVO. Um, Tammy Abraham has become the first Englishman to get into double figures for a Serie A club since David Platt did it for Bari in season 1991-92. Uh, and we've got a double whammy for Parma. They have signed one of my Serie A icons, Goran Pandev. Uh, I still hope to give him many, many honourable mentions. And also, they've moved forward with plans to redevelop the Tardini. So, welcome news on both of those fronts. And uh, that kind of segues us on to the transfer news. Fiorentina have snapped up Arthur Cabral as Vlaovic's replacement. Milan have signed 18-year-old Marco Lazetic from Red Star Belgrade. Uh, and Davide Biraski ends the season wearing Karagumruk shirts, uh, skipping the sinking ship that is Genoa. Any thoughts on that one, Boaz? Just that he looked like he was in a hostage situation in his <laughs> presentation photo. He, he was dressed in uh, very bleak clothes and he's not particularly smiling. So I hope he's all right. Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, moving on. A handful of Lazio fans have protested outside the training ground at Lotito's slapdash activity or lack thereof uh, in the transfer window. Uh, Rumours that Sari was amongst them are yet to be confirmed. (laughs) And further unwelcome news for Lazio is that uh, Croatia international Toma Basic was held up at gunpoint by a man in a motorcycle helmet who stole his Rolex. Um, I mean, hopefully he could afford to buy a new one, but uh, obviously a very traumatic experience. Uh, we've got Cristiano Piccini leaving Valencia for Red Star Belgrade. Uh, we've got Caicedo from Genoa going to, moving to Inter and reuniting with Inzaghi, obviously uh, after that time he spent together at Lazio. And... Um, Napoli's Irving Lozano, who has sustained an injury during the Mexico Panama game and could reportedly be out for, for two months. Uh, and just a final piece of news, it's not transfer related, obviously. Paolo Dalpino has resigned as president of Lega Serie A, prompting an emergency meeting to elect a successor. Uh, right, and swiftly transitioning from that. Uh, we're just going to do a very, very, very quick uh, good week, bad week this week. Uh, it's more of a housekeeping exercise, really, due to our aforementioned tech issues last week. 
Um, but we have opted to give good week to Spezia, who followed up their victory against Milan by beating Samp 1-0 for their third win in a row, which puts them eight points clear of Cagliari in the last relegation spot. And we kind of had a three-way discussion uh, for bad week. Uh, Bologna losing to Napoli and then Verona, Milan losing to Spezia and then drawing to Juve, or Samp losing to Torino, Spezia and Juve uh, and going out of the Coppa in the space of eight days. Uh, and I think I think we decided to go with bad week Samp. So good week Spezia uh, and bad week Samp, uh, obviously those from a week ago. Uh, right, Boaz, it's time for Keeping Up With The Italians. What have you got for us this week? Yeah, this is my regular segment and I'm going to try and keep it quick as usual. So first of all, in England, Sir Claudio Ranieri was unfortunately sacked after 14 games. And I have to say, uh, a lot of the coverage in uh, British media was very dismissive comparing his stint at Watford to his time at Fulham. But they seem to have forgotten that he did an incredible job at Sampdoria in between these two stints. So a little bit disrespectful for me. Uh, in other news, Marco Verratti scored his first league goal in five years for PSG, which is incredible if you ask me. Uh, Vito Manone in France made his season debut in the French Cup for Monaco against Rang. And uh, my boy Vincenzo Grifo scored a brace for Freiburg in an impressive 4-1 win against Hoffenheim. Elsewhere, uh, all-time legend Carlo Ancelotti lifted the Spanish Super Cup in Saudi Arabia for Real Madrid. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that makes him the most winning Italian coach ever. Legend. Moving swiftly to Greece, Gianluca Festa, who I denounced was sacked just a month ago, has promptly returned to Apollon Simonis, and uh, I guess they couldn't live without him. And uh, Argentinian-born Italian striker Fernando Forestieri, who played for uh, Watford and Udinese, among other teams, has now joined the Malaysian team Joao Daul Tazim. And uh, I have to say that in, from the picture of the stadium where he's going to play, the pitch looks way better than San Siro already. And... Uh, <laughs> Lastly, Giuseppe Sanino left uh, top of the league, Alitad, in Libya, ostensibly because he was worried about the COVID situation in the country and uh, promptly caught COVID as soon as he got back to Italy. So there you have it. Thank you for that, Boaz. Uh, yeah, we, I'm, not, I'm not sure we mentioned the uh, state of uh, San Siro, but uh, <laughs> yeah, the fact that it Let me start the particularly cut up. Honorable, honorable mentions with an uh, impromptu dishonorable mention for the San Siro pitch that has been a nightmare and... Last week, the, with Milan playing Juventus and Inter playing v- uh, Venezia, the, it was the first time in the history of San Siro that games were played in the same game week on, on the pitch. And honestly, it, it's quite telling. And apparently for the derby, some of the pitches being painted over, some of the pitches like random patches yeah. of glass, grass. So it's it's such a disaster and such a shame that an uh, such an iconic stadium has such a disaster of a pitch. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps an argument, although I feel like it's... Uh, cultural uh vandalism to knock down san siro but but the the pitch is perhaps the, <laughs> the best argument as a football fan that you can have uh, and they've attempted to fix it on several occasions and I guess yeah if people who that whose job is it, it is to fix these kind of things can't fix it then maybe it's time to knock it down yeah maybe Sadly, sad day. Uh, Boz, you preempted the honourable and dishonourable mentions there, but let's get straight into them. I'm going to start off with an honourable mention for Dries Mertens, uh, especially in the context of Insigne signing for uh, Toronto uh, and Vlaovic moving to to Juventus, who uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, tweeted, uh, I don't care about dollars, Napoli is enough. I have to score a lot to convince uh, and De Laurentiis to renew my contract. Uh, he can sign, sign my son too, so I won't have to leave the house and Naples. Just love that uh, dedication to to the club and city. Uh, Boaz, you've got an honourable for Alex Blanco. What's this all about? This is uh, my usual social media honourable, and it's to, I guess, to Alex Blanco and to his new side. Essentially, uh, Alex Blanco was posted on... Um, Como's social media channels of him, of some guy landing in an airport and answering his phone and saying, Como? <laughs> and then it's him walking around, what is the, the lake in Como? And again, someone calls him and he's like, Como? And it's then eventually the camera pans out and they present their new player and he's like, Como? No, it's a football club. So, um, you know, I'm sure. Big uh, reveal. 
I'm sure that uh, he was delighted when he, he arrived to the new <laughs> club and they were like, we have this incredible idea for, for the announcement. But yeah. Yeah. I good mean, luck to uh, him. Yeah, good luck to him very, very much so. But I mean, what beautiful setting to, to play your football, even if perhaps the move is, uh, you know, n- not one that you would uh, expect on, a, the, on his career trajectory. Uh, right. I'm going Como? to give... <laughs> I'm going to give my social media honourable, and this is uh, to Juan Musso. And I want you to bear with me here because I, I don't want to come across like a bit of a perv. Um, but Juan Musso came back from uh, international duty um, with Argentina to be greeted by his, his girlfriend who had laid out a, a welcoming uh, display for him in his home. Uh, I think it was maybe balloons, maybe a few flowers, and Juan Musso was was so moved by this that he decided to take a picture of it and share it on his uh, on his Instagram. But uh, unbeknownst to him, uh, that there was a mirror which uh, revealed to his many 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 Instagram followers that uh, Juan Musso was standing uh, full in full frontal nudity, uh, <laughs> reflected in the mirror. Uh, but this is an honourable to Juan Musa for the way he responded to this when it was uh, obviously very quickly pointed out to him that uh, he responded by sharing almost the identical picture except for the fact that he was wearing a t-shirt and jeans and he said, sorry about that, this is the picture I meant to share. <laughs> so honourable for taking that in uh, in good spirit. Boaz, you've got uh, an honourable for look at that. I think a bit more of a serious one, this one. Yeah, this is uh, following the news of uh, Patrick Cortona's uh, dad passing away. It was a there was a really not touching uh, tribute from Locatelli, who sent uh, a social media message to his uh, close friend. Of course, both of them grew up in the Milan Giovanili, so they've known each other for a long time. And it's just nice to see that players are, uh, let's say, humans off the pitch as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm moving from that to a completely probably inappropriately uh, light-hearted one but i'm giving napoli uh, a flat out dishonorable for sporting their 11th kit of the season against salernitana which was a, this was a valentine's day special uh, i mean they're finding any excuse the guys at uh, Empori armani to wheel out the the latest kit and obviously napoli are very happy to to play along I mean, 11 kits in one season, uh, just get out of here, basically, would be would be my and message. Just under two-thirds of a season. How many yeah, more shirts exactly. do they have planned? <laughs> How many more do we have in store? Good point. Uh, Buzz, honorable from you for Juve's new signing, Gatti. Yeah, in amongst all the hoo-ha about signing Vlaovic and signing uh, Zakaria, it might have gone under the t- under the the rug a little bit that Juve also signed uh, Gatti who is a promising player who currently is playing in Serie B for Spal and this is honorable to him because essentially he was a bricky just five years ago and he literally made his uh, way up through non-league to lower divisions and right up to Serie B and now to the one of the biggest clubs in Italy and uh, also it's it's quite fitting because he did start his career in the Turin area albeit in uh, non-league football so he's kind of returning home yeah living the dream a very very nice honorable there um i also have what i i I think most people i think all people will agree is a nice honorable uh and this one is for well it's it's for brentford and for former inter player obviously and spurs player and ix player uh, christian erickson who is uh who is signed for brentford um it's just i i just think it's great to to see him uh playing football again really hope that goes well for him uh and i'm sure that you know all of the kind of necessary tests precautions etc have have taken place and i guess uh, another opportunity to throw in an honorable mention for uh milan's uh simon Chiar for uh for for, for what he did for, for christian erickson just great to see him uh you know Fingers crossed, back to full fitness. It's, um, it's unreal considering the events that unfolded in front of our eyes in the summer to think that he's uh, going to be back on a football pitch. And uh, as you said, yeah. wish him all the best. And since he is now officially left Serie A, it's, uh, it might be one of our last chances to uh, mention him. So well worth it. 
Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Right. I think we're I think we're sticking now, Boaz, with low brow uh, and non serious uh, mentions for, from here on in. Uh, we're gonna, I you're resent gonna kick the accusation. With, <laughs> you're gonna kick us off with a dishonorable for a spat between Midjorini and Meyer. Listen, I, I don't mean to be insensitive or um, or an anti woke, but. In the recent Serie B game between Lecce and Vicenza, there was a, a bit of a mass brawl towards the end of the game, and uh, Majorini was then uh, seen in tears, and what transpired was that uh, Meyer, who plays for uh, Lecce, had insulted Majorini's parents, or his mom, who happens to have passed away, but, I mean, I don't again, I don't mean to be insensitive, but to burst into tears about something that someone said to you on the pitch. I mean, there's no way Maya knew that this guy's mom had passed away. He just said something spur of the moment. So it's all a bit snowflakey to me. But uh, to, to kind of give it a nice twist, uh, Maya then went on TV and said, listen, I, in the heat of the moment, I said something that I didn't mean. And I want to apologize to uh, Majorini and to his family. So I guess it's all good. But like, get a grip, guys. Yeah, not entirely convinced that either of those two come out of that looking particularly great, to be honest. I'm moving on to what is a, is kind of a double, a, a dishonorable slash honorable. So I'm giving a dishonorable to the uh, Roma fan from, from Sicily who camped outside the Roma's training ground for five days to, to, to wish Mourinho a happy birthday. I mean... Much like your uh, previous message, I, I guess the sentiment is nice, but seriously, mate. <laughs> yeah. But on the flip side, I am going to give uh, an, an honourable to uh, Mourinho and the obviously the staff at Roma who are, would, have, would have been involved as, as well, who eventually called him in and uh, sat him down to, to lunch with uh, Mourinho and his coaching staff in uh, in the training uh, camp and by all accounts it looks like Mourinho gave him plenty of time and uh, had a nice chat with him and I, I think whatever you you do have to say about Mourinho about how he handles the media about you know what your thoughts about his football I, I think we, we do have to say that he has historically always handled these uh, situations you know really really well and made everyday fans feel really valued um, so so an honourable, an honourable to to Mourinho, I think. Rome is hardly Antarctica, but I'm I'm sure like it's not the most pleasant time of the year <laughs> to be camping outside of uh, Trigoria, and so I uh, I hope that they gave him a warm blanket and uh, maybe a warm tea as well while they were at it. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. But you've got another honourable for Roma again. This is for Roma socials, I believe. I'm not sure if we mentioned this. Uh, a few weeks back but there was a uh, when um actually we didn't mention it because we were off the air but essentially when uh roma were leading juventus uh 3-1 and eventually managed to lose somehow uh, a young roma fan wrote a note to the club saying that he was giving up on football and dedicating his life to basketball because basketball was the perfect sport and such things wouldn't happen to him in, <laughs> in basketball and uh obviously the roma social media team who are uh, always on the ball they immediately brought this young kid called Samuele in and uh, they essentially signed him for as a fan for life um, I'm sure he I'm, I don't know who his agent is but I hope he made a good cut yeah nicely done nicely done and Boaz to finish off our honorables and honorables a bit of an extended section this week uh, you have an honorable for Scamacca and Consigli so first of all, a little bit of background. Uh, Torino defender Bremer who has just signed a new contract as well, but he's uh, one of the best defenders in Serie A this season. He's He's been really impressing and uh, apparently the big clubs have set eyes on him. And uh, Scamacca, following the game between Sassuolo and Torino, he published a photo on his Instagram showing kind of a contrast in the air between himself and Bremer, to which uh, goalkeeper Consigli sent him a message saying, hey, uh, is his Bremer still marking you? And and uh, Scamacca <laughs> responded, he, he's over here for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So uh, that was good. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, perfect. Well, that is all that we have time for this week. Um, I just want to thank, I guess, an especially big thank you this week uh, to all of our listeners for, for tuning in. We 
will be back next week. But in the meantime, uh, I can assure you we'll be back next week. Uh, but in the meantime, please do uh, subscribe or continue to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your audio, Neil Young. <clears throat> yeah, we'll be back next week. And until then, enjoy the football. Il titolo del 